Hello everyone. Well, if you want to remain in the United States legally, then this video is for you. If you want to become a permanent resident, this video is for you. Well, this is a continuation of series which I have been sharing with you all as far as uh, employment-based immigration, second preference refers to as EB2 is concerned. So far, so good. I've shared three different videos with you. In the first one, I explained about my general perspective or overview. Share, I shared my cover letter, which shows everything I included in my petition. So I would advise you to go through the video and see how you can use that to guide your own. In the second video, I shared with you how you can fill form I-140. Form I-140 is one of the forms you have to fill alongside your self-petition. In that video, I showed you how you can get the form I-140 for free and even followed by the instructional guidelines in filling the form I-140. Um, the third video, which was the last one, I explain advanced degree professional, which is one of the criteria of your filing for this category. You must be an advanced degree professional. I will put all these links accordingly in that sequence in the description of this uh, video. My advice to you is to check them out. Today, I will also briefly talk on exceptional ability. And uh, after today's video, I think subsequent videos, we should go to other parts of my petition. And uh, hopefully it will be of help to you. You will recall that I said for you to qualify for this category of immigration, which is a uh, employment based second preference, you need to belong to one of two categories. The first is that you could have an advanced degree or its equivalent, which has been explained earlier. And the second is that you must be an exceptional, you must have or possess exceptional ability in your field. So today I'm going to talk more on exceptional ability. What does it mean that, what does it mean to possess an exceptional ability in your field? or area of endeavor. To qualify for this EB2 visa category, you, the applicant, must be exceptionally skilled in sciences, engineering, STEM subjects, arts, business, in any of this field. So, my advice or take on this is that regardless of what you have studied, you can self-petition. It all depends on several criteria. It simply means that you should have a level of expertise that is significantly higher than what is commonly found in your fields among your peers that have the same degree, what distinguished you? What makes you exceptional? What makes you unique? You have your stories, share it, tell that story. For example, maybe you've been previously recognized, you've received recognition in your field, or maybe in some courses you've taken before, in some classes, these are part of it. It counts. Maybe you've received awards in any form, recognizing you in one way or the other. 
is part of it. Even certificate of appreciation. Perhaps you were part of a committee, you were part of uh, a team, and you deliver a project, you contributed to the community, and after all that, you received certificate of appreciation. It is part of it, as simple as that. Or even if it's certifications, yes, Mr. A and Mr. B studied computer science. However, Mr. B has received many other certifications that has made him step up or that has made him, you know, be above his peers. It is still part of this exceptional ability. So think of it in, of different ways in which you can prove your exceptional ability. That doesn't mean you must be a genius. No, it does not necessarily mean that. Again, part of the eligibility for this exceptional ability is that it must benefit the United States. Your work should substantially benefit the US now or in the future. This simply means that whatever you claim that you do, whatever you've studied, whether in the sciences, art, or business, should contribute in a meaningful way to the US economy, its culture, its education, and perhaps overall well being. And you can argue this in various ways. You can argue it in various ways of how your area, the area you are working on, is benefiting the United States. If you are an entrepreneur, for example, or what you are doing will create more jobs, it is part of it is benefiting the US. If you have uh, an online educational technology edtech platform, for example, where students can learn easily from your platform, is part of it. You are making education accessible and easy for students. So think of anything your field is doing, which you are part of, that is of benefit to the US. Maybe you are into cyber security and in your area you've done so many awesome jobs. Of course, cyber security is very beneficial to the US and many, many others. As part of this eligibility for this exceptional ability is also employer interest. An employer in the US must desire, must want to hire you for your exceptional abilities in your field. And let me put it this way. This goes for those that had already secured a job. So if you already have a job that you are doing in the US and you've still not gotten your permanent residence, then your employer can also apply for this category for you. If you have just graduated, haven't had your master's degree, and you have seen uh, an employer interested in hiring you, that is part of it. You could argue that and you could supply evidence of that. Maybe it's only internship opportunity you've had in one semester or two different sessions or anyhow. That internship of you being employed by an employer for that duration, whether it's part-time or full-time role, is part of you showing that, yes, they are interested in you. However, take notes. Does that mean if I do not have employment offer, 
I do not qualify. No, that is not the case. And that is when we're going to get to the other part, which is called NIW, National Interest Waiver. That is another subcategory of the EB2 that says that you do not need a job offer for you to self-petition and apply for this immigration category. All right. So capital, for you to qualify for this exceptional ability category, you need exceptional expertise in your field. Let it be that you have or you draw out a clear plan on how it's going to benefit the U.S. And perhaps an employer is also interested in your abilities. And some of you, you are working hybrid, regardless of the country you are. You've been working for international companies. It is part of it that shows that, yes, employers, companies are interested in my field. So even if you reside in Africa and you are doing an hybrid, uh, well, a virtual job, online job for a company in another country in the UK and the US, this is part of it. You could find this as your evidence as well. All right. Um, next is what are some of the evidence you can show for these exceptional abilities? One of it is your academic records, which is what I initially described in my previous video about advanced degree professional. Please go to that video and see how you can draft your chapter one. In that video, I, I, I showed a case study of someone's petition on how the person drafted chapter one advanced degree professional. So this academic record is saying that your official academic records is part of it, which you have hand. It could be a diploma, a certificate, a first degree, for those of you that have master's degree, or even those that had a PhD, you can supply all that as part of your academic records. But let it be that it's also aligned. You are, your, your story is coherent, is aligning with the area you are claiming exceptional ability for. So you could provide your transcripts. If you have, uh, my advice is that if you have uh, outstanding uh, outstanding results, then you want to provide your transcript as part of the exhibit as well. For those of you that have graduated with maybe a first class, a second class upper, or even regardless of the degree, but maybe in some locations and some courses you did extremely good, you want to point out those parts in your evidence as well. So the second one after academic records is employment experience. So you can present letters from your current or former employers, provided you can confirm, in addition to everything they will say about you, that you have at least 10 years of full-time experience, non-stop, 10 years, progressive, in the area, the field, the occupation, where you are claiming exceptional ability of. So um, if, for example, you had a degree in, say, food science technology, and you are present, you've been working in quality assurance capacity, you know, that aligns. So you want to speak to those experience of yours through your employer. Another one is a professional license or certification, the third one. This is another evidence that you can provide. Think of it this way. You say you are exceptional in a particular field. What other things make you a stand out? 
do you possess a professional license? Or the question is even, in that field of yours, is license required? If license is required, it will speak well of you if you possess such license, since you are claiming to be exceptional. Or are there certifications that you can do that in one way or the other speaks to your area of exceptional ability? If you provide this evidence, it can speak volume or hard weight to your petition. Another one, I think uh, the fourth one now is a salary you've earned before or currently. You can demonstrate that you have earned a significant salary or any other form of compensation for your services to show your exceptional ability. So if you have work experience, you are working and you are being paid, if it's a good salary, you want to show that salary. Or if you've done any freelance service to anyone before, you know, and you've been compensated, you also want to show it. Uh, this could be a form of, uh, for the salary part, of course, if you're working or you are employed, you have your pay slip. Uh, if you've done a service for someone before, uh, you have uh, invoice. It, it could be an invoice that is even signed by you. Or you have an invoice to that effect that you can show as exhibit. The next one, another form of evidence is professional membership. If your field that you are claiming to be exceptional as membership, it doesn't speak good of you if you claim you are exceptional in that field and you do not belong to uh, a professional membership, you do not hold a professional membership. So you want to make sure that you have a proof of membership in a professional association that is related to your field. And it could be international, it could be in the US, it could be in another country, if you are outside the US, there are some professional membership you can hold that as they are based in the US, you probably want to belong to such as well so that it can speak more volume. But if you have any other internationally recognized uh, professional membership, why not? You, you want to also provide such evidence as part of your exhibit. The next one is uh, recognition and achievements. Uh, you can include evidence, different form of evidence of recognition for your achievements and contributions uh, to your industry or field. Uh, this recognition can take different forms. Uh, well, it could be from peers, uh, government entities, uh, professional business organization, and um, any form of recognition, it could be from your community, it could be from your uh, branch, uh, it could be nationally, it could be locally, it could be internationally, any form of recognition and achievement. Let me put it this way. Don't let us make this uh, like a big deal. For example, look at this. You participated in... Uh, a particular community service or community work. And uh, all they gave you at the end of the day was just a letter of appreciation to thank you for your participation, your involvement in that particular community project. This can serve as an exhibit. It shows that you are relevant in the first place. Why have they invited you or why have they allowed you to participate in such a uh, service? So it could also be voluntary service. And at the end of the day, they appreciated you with a letter. It shows that 
you are relevant and you are contributing, making meaningful impact in your field. Or even if you personally have initiated a project before, regardless of what the project is, if you can argue the points in aligning with your area of expertise, these can serve as recognition as well. So awards, honors, or if you've even written articles that have been published, you know, it's part of it. So all this category of evidence that I've shared with you, what it doesn't mean you need to have all these six. No, you should have at least three of it. So if you have at least three of it, make sure you make the argument great. If you have more than three, of course, had everything. So this is exceptional ability. So I want you to probably start looking at yourself, things you've done all this while, and see how you can prove your exceptional ability. In the next video, I think we, we should be progressing to other parts of the self-petition itself. And um, I will also fill some other forms that uh, are required uh, to be included in your self-petition. And um, I might also touch on recommendation letters because some people have been asking questions about how do you, because recommendation letter is part of your exhibit. Um, I will speak to recommendation letters as well because there are two types of recommendation letter, uh, a dependent recommendation letter and an independent recommendation letter. We're also going to try to address such. So again, my advice would be that if you find this useful, you want to span into action, you want to try to make use of this opportunity, uh, you have that exceptional ability. You don't have to be a genius. You don't have to have a the first class before you qualify for things like this. It's all about your stories. What have you been doing? What are you doing? How is it of merit? Uh, how is it contributing to, you know, the glo globally or to the US? And uh, that'll be that for now. Uh, I wish you all the best and see you. Bye-bye.